Hi everyone. This is the first of our series of lessons on the Banjura study, which was conducted by Banjura, Ross, and Ross in 1961. This is one of the most famous studies in psychology. It's a pioneering study. It's still being taught almost like 50 plus years later. And so you can imagine that it has a lot of significance. And through this series of lessons, you'll understand why it's so important, not just in terms of what it discovered at the time in which it was done, but the ways in which it opened up new avenues of thinking or ways of thinking about aggression and how it develops, particularly in children. So let's get started with a quick introduction to the study with an overview and a review of the key terms, which I'll do next. A quick overview is that this study is part of the learning approach in psychology. And if you remember that the learning approach has three key theories. So when we talked about Fagan et al. study, we were talking about the operant conditioning and classical conditioning theories, which are two of the other key theories. But Bandura study is situated and is focused primarily on social learning theory. If you recall, one of the key assumptions of the learning approach is that we learn all behavior through exposure to our environment. And whatever the environment shows us and whatever the environment offers us in terms of consequences of our behavior is what we will end up learning. Now, the social learning theory in particular, what it says is that we learn behaviors that are modeled to us. So in other words, we pick up on behavior through observation. And this observation is basically of the people around us. And when we see behavior, we observe behavior in a model who is somebody who is particularly influential for us in our particular context, somebody we admire, somebody we may look up to, then we are likely to simply imitate that behavior. And that is how we learn this new behavior. So social learning, social interaction, learning behavior, social learning theory. And so Bandura is actually the person who founded social learning theory, and he's an extremely important figure in the entire field of psychology. And he's particularly important, of course, within the learning approach. And the learning approach is focused on behaviorism. So what I just said about how we learn all our behaviors uh, by observing the environment and what the environment offers us in terms of consequences. So that's what behaviorism is. When we talk about behaviorism, we talk about the human being as an organism, and that organism will learn behaviors through exposure to the environment. The behaviorist approach and the cognitive approach are both closely related in terms of time, because the behaviorist approach, if you remember a little bit about our learning approach lesson much earlier in this course, you will remember that The learning approach really started to emerge around the early 1900s when you had Pavlov's dogs experiment and then you had B.F. Skinner come in and then so we move forward and we have Albert and Watson's experiments. And then around the 1950s or 60s, the cognitive approach started to have some prominence where the brain is a supercomputer which is processing information and producing behavior as an output. And so interestingly, the social learning theory accounts for the role of thinking. Because remember, we will, in the social learning theory, we think about the model's behavior. We don't just blindly imitate it. We actually evaluate it in terms of what are the consequences of this behavior. So that's a little nuance of the social learning theory. But coming back to Bandura's experiment, it's interesting because it melds this focus on cognitivism, sorry, on behaviorism with a little bit of cognitivism, and then he develops social learning theory. Now, this experiment in particular is one of multiple experiments that Bandura had conducted to further develop social learning theory. And what his focus was in this particular experiment was how does aggression develop in children in the sense of children watching models who will display aggressive or non-aggressive behavior 
would then be likely to imitate those responses. And in the case of aggressive behavior, they would likely imitate the same aggressive behaviors that they saw in a model. But if they were looking at a non-aggressive uh, model in terms of the behavior being non-aggressive of that model, then possibly children would be more likely to curb or to pause or to not act on their aggressive impulses because the non-aggressive model is actually modeling what is called inhibition. So he was exploring through the modeling um, concept, which is fundamental to social learning theory, how children will learn or will not learn aggressive behaviors. He conducted this experiment with 74, sorry, this is wrong, it's 72, 72 children. And these children were an average of 4.3 years old. And within this experiment, he used male and female models who modeled aggressive and non-aggressive behaviors so that he could also determine whether, for example, would boys respond more to a male model, whereas girls would respond more to a female model, meaning would girls be more likely to imitate the female and would boys be more likely to imitate the male model. But remember that aggression is also seen as a very masculine sort of tendency. And the time at which this study was done, gender roles were very different. And so when you really reflect on this study after you finish your series of lessons, I would encourage you to think about the role of context as well, because it is about the environment. The environment in the 60s, as far as men and women and expectations of behavior are concerned, and the environment that exists today in 2024, in terms of those expectations, is quite different. Do account for context when you reflect on this study after you've learned it, but for your current purposes, you just need to know that this is a very important study, and the focus of this was on how children acquire aggressive behaviors through imitation of models, and how children possibly also acquire inhibition of aggressive behavior through exposure to non-aggressive models. Both male and female models were used in this experiment to see if there were sex differences in the imitation responses as well. So now we can look at the key terms of the study. So again, social learning theory is an influential learning theory. The behaviors that are modeled by people that we admire, people who have influence over us, it could be an elder sibling, it could be a celebrity, we are more likely to reproduce their behaviors if the environment offers us motivation to do. Either the situation is such that we feel the way that person had responded to the situation is the way I should respond, or you may feel that if I do this in the way that I saw this model respond, then... I am more likely to receive some sort of positive reinforcement. And imitation of the behavior that you see in a model, it can happen immediately in the same social setting as the model, or it can even be delayed imitation. An important thing for you to keep in mind is that Bandura study focused on delayed imitation. Now, Behaviorism, as I just mentioned, is this perspective that underpins the entire learning approach and cognitivism, on the other hand, is the perspective underpinning the cognitive approach. I don't want you to get confused here. Do remember that the social learning theory and Bandura study that we're talking about today is completely focused within the learning approach, right? So, it is very much a behaviorist perspective, and you should remember it as such. Now, let's talk about aggression. I just mentioned it while giving you a quick overview, and of course, you have some sort of implicit understanding, or you know a little bit intuitively what aggression is and what it looks like. But in psychology, what we define aggression as, technically speaking, is an antisocial or hostile response now, this response can be physical, it can be verbal, it can be physical and verbal. Sometimes it can be non-verbal and physical as well. And the purpose of the response is to harm the other. Now, all aggression is not bad. Aggression is something that we have acquired through evolution. So it gives us an evolutionary advantage. Why is that? Because... 
aggression is almost aggression is a response that can protect you from a potential threat hence all aggression is not bad but of course it depends on the situation now aggression can happen it does happen with an intention to harm the other person or thing so aggression can be directed toward an animate meaning living or inanimate meaning non living object that may come across your path so the next set of key terms is the model and in the context of social learning theory the model is a person who you identify with in some way you relate to them very deeply this could be because they're good looking they're admired they're popular otherwise influential it could be your older sibling it could be your parent it could be a teacher it could be a celebrity an actor it could even be one of the popular kids in school it could be your best friend but it's somebody who you identify with so you will not go around modeling behavior that you see in everybody you will model behavior so you will imitate behavior that you see in a model so you will not imitate everybody's behavior but you will imitate the behavior from model why because you identify you identify with the model and you identify with them because some part of you can relate to them or admires them you want to be like them on some level now imitative behavior in itself within this study within this theory is defined as a behavior that is reproduced copied by another person after that person has observed a model a person who is influential do that same behavior and there can be delayed or immediate imitation of the behavior and you can see delayed imitation right here that after some time has passed you will imitate that behavior that you have observed and just a quick refresher because i did use the term positive reinforcement earlier in operant conditioning which is one of the other theories of the learning approach positive reinforcement is when the environment offers you a positive consequence a reward when you conduct or when you engage in a particular behavior so that's positive reinforcement now before we move on to the background just a quick look at the overview again this study is focused on how children can learn aggressive behavior by observing it in a model and this study wanted to test whether children who observed an aggressive model were more likely to imitate that aggressive behavior in the absence of the model and whether observing a non aggressive model would mean that the child who's observed the non aggressive model is likely to imitate the inhibition of aggression and it wanted to see if boys and girls who were part of the 72 children strong sample would then actually in, tend toward imitating the same sex model more than the opposite sex model because the study as you can see used both male and female models 